Anglia Car Auctions have got 2024 off to a strong start with their winter sale, which is on the 27th and 28th of January. Bidding can happen in person, over the phone, or online, and they have got a staggering variety of cars up for grabs here today. So Sam and I are gonna have a little wander around and see just some of the highlights. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers, and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. Right, we're starting with this fantastic Austin Metro, Sam. A bit of a favorite of yours, I think? Absolutely, 80s stuff's always been good with me, and I actually think it's the time of the Metro now. Anglia's got a lovely 80s Mini in the same sale, beautiful little brown city, and it's got the same guide price as this. Well, now, these, are, these are rarer than Minis, aren't they? They now? absolutely so this is the are, thing. ironically, because of the amount of people who've torn the engines out of these for Minis in the past. The days of these being donor cars are long gone now, Phil, I think, yep. because when it comes to a point where a Metro is predicted to fetch the same money in a sale as an equivalent Mini. Yeah. What's the point in breaking these? Well, these are, these are, these are, this is a low yesterday. mileage one. It's got 27,000 on the odometer. It's a Mayfair spec, which I love. Actually, I always prefer them as five door models. Um, and the interior is absolutely mint. It's got the facelift interior rather than the very early car. Yeah, I really like them. I'm always, I've always been fond of the Metro and uh, there's a bit of 80s classics, you can't go wrong. I uh, wanted to go back a decade to the 1970s, to my favorite era, Mark III Cortina 1.6 XL. And it's an early one with the early dashboard. It's got as the well. early, exactly, the early Americana style uh, interior and fascia rather than the slightly blander one that went on to go into the Mark IV as well. 1.6, same family owned, um, so it's got three owners on the logbook. Uh, it's had some new brakes and tyres, so it's been recently sort of recommissioned. And it looks like original paint as well, but it's not in bad nick. It's, it's, in, it's in fabulous nick. This one will be familiar to regular readers of Classics World magazine. A Vanden Plas. Originally a 1700, it's now got the 1500 engine in it, as readers may recall, because there were some issues with the previous gearbox. Yes, so we've documented this over several issues of Classics World magazine, haven't we? Yes, indeed. Uh, and it's been... Um, a test of one's patience, British Leyland product at its finest. Oh, absolutely. But um, do you know what? I still think it's a fabulous car. And as, as long as people go into this with their eyes open, this will be a great value, 1970s classic. Let's go into the other hall. There's plenty more Let's over there, there to see. Um, this is a bit new for you, I reckon, but, uh, yes, a, but modern, a modern hatch. I think this is the best investment that's here, Phil. And I'll tell you why. You and I both remember maybe 20, 25 years ago when cars like that Escort over there, that RS2000 could be had for a thousand quid, 1500 quid. Yep. They were everywhere, we didn't care about them. No. People who grew up in the 70s might have wanted them, but they'd have bought them at that point as something to rag about and it doesn't matter if anything happens to it. It lives outside, it lives on the street. Nowadays, of course, that doesn't happen just because yeah. of how expensive they are. Can't be many the of these left, this is the thing. They've all been bashed, thrashed and written off. So yes. this one is a real survivor car with low mileage. Now this one has just got such a fabulous story. So this is a sort of um, pre-production prototype car, mm -hmm. supposedly one of the last cars that Colin Chapman himself was involved with. It's got active suspension. They lent it out to DeLorean or something mad like that. DeLorean needed Lotus's help at the time because they were trying to build cars out of a plastic that quite frankly wasn't crash resistant and yeah. wasn't, wasn't strong in any way. Colin Chapman was supposed to help John DeLorean engineer this. He decided, no, this won't work, threw it away and just stuck in his free backbone underneath. A real time warp piece because then it was tucked away in sort of a Lotus's factory uh, until a few years ago, I believe. Didn't the bloke have people coming after him from Lotus at regular points in time saying, look, we want this car back. So he had to keep moving where he hid it. Yes, yeah, that's right. But um, yeah, it's got obviously a very strong uh, guide price, but you know, as a piece of living it's history car isn't it it's, it's a one-off it. it's a one-off you're yeah. not going to get anything like this and as a fan of roger moore uh, in james bond of course it harks back to that as well but um it comes to 70s things phil i thought you had a thing for these you want to talk you want to talk about yes Datsun, well I, i've i've always loved the z cars this is the datsun 260 z and it's a um, two plus two relatively model short well, production life on these 74 to 78 i believe so this is kind of towards the end of the production run um, it's got the 2.6 straight six engine, about 160 horsepower. I just love the styling. I just think it's sort of like a, some sort of mini sort of Ferrari kind of Porsche mashup maybe. I love the sort of interior. I think this is when the Japanese cars just 
really started to ooze cool and perhaps start to trouble some of the Western car makers, you know. So, um, listen, I'm not a great Alfa Romeo fan and I don't know too much about them, but there's a two Alfettas in the sale, a GTV and a GTS. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted to pass mention to these because they're, they're so rare. Um, and this is a lovely, a lovely example. Now, you know there are other cars here from the Alfa Romeo stable that I want to talk about later in this video. Indeed. But I think these are fantastic. They're pretty. They handle so beautifully. The weight balance is perfect. There's plenty more over there, which I think we're going to have a look at as well. Yes, so let's, absolutely. Uh, let's wander. OK, Sam, how do you make the Aston Martin Virage even more butch? The answer is you put extra wide wheel arches on it. So here we are, a wide bodied Aston Martin Virage Volante, so the soft top version. Only 26 made of this spec. Mm -hmm. Still got the 5.3 V8 engine. It's got a tonneau cover, it's got a battery charger. They've had a fortune spent on this car, it really is, and it's immaculate. I didn't even know this was in the sale, but look at this fabulous Ford Thunderbird. Now, of course, the uh, Jaguar S Type was based on the same platform. Mm -hmm. They never officially came to the UK, so it's left-hand drive. To contrast beautifully with the sort of idiosyncratic and the bravestly brutish, it's we've got fantastic. this. We've got this Peugeot 309. This is beautiful. Look now, at this. What, what I love about this is this, this, this um, is a very early car, so it's got the original early dashboard. This lacked any of the Pininfarina sort of niceties of the 205, because um, of course it was going to be a Simca, wasn't it, and a Talbot, I think. It and was. Then, it was going to be the Talbot Arizona. So um, yes, but instead we got to, as the oddly numbered Peugeot 309. So Sam, we've already covered uh, one Ford that's in the sale, and there are many Fords for the record, but I just really wanted to pick up this 1959 Anglia 105e. Remarkably straight example. It's uh, part of a deceased estate where the uh, previous owner had owned it for 19 years. Um, so I just, I, I, lo I love it. I love the sort of uh, original interior, the mm. sort of patina about it. Yeah, it's got decent amount of paperwork around it. It's, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's so original, so straight, I just think, Again, mega rare. Listen, I must just point out, there's a, a Range Rover P38 over there, and there's also a Range Rover L322 in the sale, and I believe you have owned or do own both. Correct. Can I draw you on which one you prefer? No. <laughs> They're very different experiences. Phil. You love them both equally, like your children. Right, Sam, I'm a big fan of a camper van, and this Bedford Rascal, 1988 example. It's had a reconditioned engine about a thousand miles ago. It's got a working fridge, it's got the sink and cooker and solar panels, so it's ready to go. Um, we actually had, had a uh, Honda Axi Roma home and a part of a trading up challenge we did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, just, I just loved it. And um, this particular example is, um, is actually very tidy, a very straight original condition, 79K on the odometer, I think. Really sensible guy price. I just look at this and I think of Sotty and Sweep, if I'm honest. Well, it, it would certainly fit you hand in glove, I think. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's very good. But there's just such a fantastic selection. If we just take a wander down here, because I know there's a, a rather modern Italian classic you want to get to, but we'll just have a little stroll down here. I mean, X100, XK8s, these are coming, coming rarer. And then Time over held. there, we've got the rival for it. We've got the Maserati. Got the Maserati, yep, lovely. Got BMW 6 Series there and a Z4. We've got a gorgeous, look at this, Phil. This Rover P4, Rover P4. beautiful. Is that it, a bit of you? It's absolutely a bit of me. You ought to like this Alpha 166 that is one of the cars I want to look at. Well, I've got to say, the, the 166 kind of fell under the radar for me, but I mean, you know this car particularly because it belongs to a fellow motoring scribe. It does. It belongs to a fellow motoring writer who has actually, I believe, deputy edited a magazine that's very, very well regarded in the industry. He's owned this car twice. He loved it so much that the first time he sold it, he went back and bought it back. It's, it's featured in the pages of Practical Classics and Auto Italia, I it believe. Has, it was a, It was a, a, a cat, cat C. I think it was a Cat C, yes. Someone um, went at the back of him. But with it, substantially it rebuilt properly. and uh, rebuilt to a, a nice standard. It so. has, and he's only selling it now, Phil, because he's bought himself a 90s Maserati Ghibli to use every day instead. The man has taste. Oh. Well, look, I mean, it doesn't quite have the same Italian exotica as, uh, as that Alpha 166, but I really wanted to point out this Jaguar X300 3.2. Well, reason you it, know I'm a sucker for these, I've well, got three of them. Exactly, so you've got an X900. But this, <laughs> this, what I really liked about this is that it's a really humdrum spec, it's got the steel wheel caps, it's, it needs tidying. It right? needs a little But bit. it's selling for no reserve, Sam. So, I mean, just as a cheap way into Jaguar motoring, I don't think this is better. Remember, it's got the AJ16 engine, which I stand is the, probably the best engine Jaguar ever made. It is. And uh, although it's a 3.2, mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. You can still make plenty of progress with it. BMW E39 5 Series, peak BMW for me. Mm -hmm. Bit of American muscle here for you. 
not really my thing to be honest. Not, not, not my bag either, but uh, yeah, I imagine Joe Miller would be all over that. But I know you like this, and I think this is one of the cars you want to take home, isn't it? Yeah, this, this as an Austin 1100, I'm a big fan of these. I always think they're much maligned. They got brutishly sort of uh, destroyed through 40 towers and reliability reputation, which I don't think was particularly fair. But it's just a big, pretty mini, really, isn't it? And, and still relatively affordable, Sam. I mean, this is the thing. This has got a really sensible guide price. I think you can get into a traditional British classic for not much money. Thing is, if I was buying something in this sale that had been styled by Pininfarina, it wouldn't be this Austin. Film. I know where you're going. I'm going right next to it. Far, Sam. Right here. For me, it'd be this Fiat 130. It's gorgeous. It's got 3.2 V6, arguably the best styling of the 1970s. There are no cars here that suit my cravat better than this does. It is stunning, and isn't it? These things are chronically undervalued. Quite. The guide price is five to seven thousand pounds, and I think. Well, first thing I think is, please, for the love of God, give me a pay rise so I can go out and buy this thing. But <laughs> beyond that, this will never be this good value again. These haven't been this good value in a long time. I actually think this is undervalued at this sale. I think this will go into the five figures. And I, I just, think it's um, I really like these. Uh, I, I say, I think I'd buy it for the engine alone. 3.2 V6 is a is a stunning power plant. But uh, listen, that's just a flavour of some of the many, many lots available at the Anglia Car Auction Winter Sale, 27th, 28th of January. So you haven't got long. Remember, bidding online, over the phone, or in person. There are a number of other highlights. I just wrote down some ones we've not even mentioned. Uh, an E-Class 2.2 convertible. So two of them, a Turbo Estate over there. Um, so just so many more cars that you could uh, you could choose from. A real wide variety. If you missed the January sale, they've got another sale coming up in April. We'll put a link in the description for their website. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Put in the comments which car you would like to take home. Perhaps you even made a bid um, on a sale and you've watched this video afterwards and let us know if you bought one of the cars. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.